God has plans to prosper you, give you hope and a future too. So let me remind you of what you have the power to do. You can win, live your dreams, reach your goals, be happy, you can make it. Get motivated with Cassandra Don't match their energy. Discern it and protect yours. Don't match their energy. Discern theirs and protect yours. Welcome. I'm Cassandra Mack, founder of Strategies for Empowerliving.com and Cassandra Mack Ministries.com. For more information about my books, one to one coaching, inspirational music, merch, you'll see the links in the video description box and pinned as a comment. Please remember to like, subscribe, share the videos so that we can reach more people with this content. So welcome, welcome, welcome. There's a lot of talk about matching people's energy. And you'll hear people say, well, this year I'm matching energy. And the thing that I want to get across to the believer is that when you are on a journey of bettering your life, moving forward with your goals, your dreams, the things that make you happy and bring you joy, you have to be very intentional about what you choose to do with your time, how you invest your time. See, a lot of people spend time, but most people don't invest time. Like a lot of people spend money, but don't invest money. And so when you're matching a toxic person's energy with equal to toxicity, you're investing your energy in the wrong direction, taking away your focus from more important things and better things that you should have to do with your time if you're on the path to positive living, if you're on the path to creating a better life for yourself, to try and to bring some of your goals and dreams into fruition, you don't even have the luxury of time to waste being negative. So I wanna really begin to move away, move us away from from that kind of faulty thinking of matching people's energy and rather discern their energy while protecting yours. So if we think about what energy is, right? Energy is the basic building block of the universe. Everything in the universe is made up of energy. If you remember back in science, when we learn that atoms are the basic building block for everything, that there are protons, neutrons, electrons. You remember that from science? Put science in the comments. And so a lot of times we think that these terms are new age, but actually they are not new age terms. New age might have jack hijacked some of these terms, but this is actually from science. So energy is the basic building block of the universe. One thing we know about energy is that it cannot be created or destroyed only transformed. So when a person is coming at you with negative energy, right? The reason you can feel it is because energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. And so that energy is going out into the atmosphere towards you. And you can feel that. Not only that, let's go a little deeper. There's a concept called frequency and frequency is the rate at which something vibrates. The higher the frequency, the faster the vibration. Now what's vibration? Vibration is simply the movement of particles right? The movement of particles. Everything is made up of particles. 
and vibration is caused by the transfer of energy from one object to another. We're going somewhere with this. So if you've ever said, you know what? I don't vibe with him. I don't vibe with her. What, what's actually happening spiritually and scientifically is you are sensing and seeing how that person is moving because what is vibration? Vibration is movement. It is the movement of particles. It is the motion of particles, right? Human beings are made up of particles. And so you are looking at how that person is moving and it doesn't sit well with you. And so we don't say all this. We just may say, I really don't vibe with her. I don't vibe with him. Or have you ever been around a group of people and you were like, I just wasn't feeling their vibe? Let's break that down. Let's say that the group of people were all talking amongst themselves and leaving you out of the conversation. Nobody tries to make conversation with you. They just sitting there looking at you like you got two heads. So they're isolating you. Let's say that uh, not only that, when you try to, you know, get into the conversation, they talk over you, interrupt you, and then talk with one another, right? So now they're being rude. So when you say that you didn't like the vibe, what you're actually saying is you don't like how they're moving. You're noticing that they're moving with isolation, they're moving with rudeness, but we don't really dissect things, you know, to the lowest common denominator to really begin to see things uh, from a perspective that allows us to say, oh, okay, this makes sense. So this is what we're saying when we're saying we don't vibe with someone. We're really saying the way that this person moves, I'm not feeling it. Uh, it it's repelling me, the way that they're moving. And remember, movement might be what they're saying, but it can also be their body language, their demeanor, what they're not saying. So if we know that vibration is caused by the transfer of energy from one object to another, then that means that if a person is in an energetic space where they don't like you, whether they don't like you because they're resentful of your presence, they're envious, they're insecure because you're getting some shine, maybe they have racial hate or some sort of prejudicial hate, right? You might not know the specifics of why they don't like you, but the one thing you do know is that they are not in a positive energy space with you. Now, if we understand that emotions are energy, emotions are thought energy in motion. You have a thought, thought is moving through your body, right? Moving through you internally. So if a person has thoughts of hatred towards you, whatever the motivation for the hatred is, right? You are going to pick up on that. Why? Because you're gonna pick up on their vibration. That is the movement of particles caused by the transfer of energy from one object to another. So when they are transferring that hate from their mind, bringing it out into the world through the words they use, their body language, their demeanor. As the recipient of the hate, you are going to detect that, right? That's the vibration. You're going to detect how they're moving. You're going to be like, mm, they're moving with dismissiveness. They're moving with rudeness. They're moving with treating me like I'm invisible. So let's say that uh, you live in an apartment complex and uh, basically most people on your floor speak to one another. And you have one or two neighbors who look through you. You could be standing about to ring the elevator. You're standing right next to each other and you've made the attempt to smile maybe once or twice. And you notice that they deadpan you when you try to smile, like they're not trying to engage you on any level. But you notice around other neighbors, they're friendly to them. So you're like, oh, okay. So this is not that they're unfriendly to everybody for whatever reason that I don't know. They're unfriendly to me. So you can pick up on that. You are not imagining these things. But people, when they want to gaslight you, right, they will try to make you believe that you are imagining something that is clear as day. And here's the other piece, right? Here's the other piece. 
the higher the frequency, the faster the vibration. So when you are on the God frequency and you are growing spiritually, growing in the fruit of the spirit, growing in godly wisdom, knowledge, and discernment, you will discern things at the speed of light. You will discern things so quickly it will make your head spin. And this is why you can be around someone and you can instantly know this is not going to work, at least based on where they are right now. If you're a parent, you know exactly what I mean. So if you've ever been around another adult, you had no prior knowledge about this adult and you're not a person who's paranoid, but when you and your child are around this adult, there's just something about this adult that makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. You can't articulate why, but you know that you know that you know that you don't want your child talking to this adult. You don't want your child smiling at this adult. You don't want uh, your child accepting anything from this adult. Don't give, don't give my kid a lollipop or ice cream, nothing. And you are not a paranoid person. Of course, you're protective as a parent, right? But it's just something about this one adult. So you are picking up on the emotional space that they're in. See, I want to break down what the sermon is. But before I get to the sermon, I, I want to touch on instincts or intuition because we use these words interchangeably and they are not one of the same. As human beings, there are three aspects to our beingness, our beingness. And those three aspects are we live in a physical body that allows us to engage the world through the physical senses. We possess a soul that allows us to engage the world psychologically through our thoughts and our emotions and our will, which is expressed through our choices. So the soul is the mind, the will, the emotions. Together they make the personality. This is the seed of our individuality. And the essence of who we are at the core, we're spirit. That's the part of us that is to worship God in truth and in spirit. We worship from our spirit. So let's go back. So we live in a physical body and we have these three mechanisms that help us maneuver through this world, these three internal mechanisms. So the first one is our instincts and our instincts are a function of the physical body. This is why we will have a physiological reaction when our instincts kick in, whether it's sweaty palms, tension in our body, our breathing speeds up, it's different for each person. So I can't give a gazillion examples, but you get the gist. You'll have some sort of physical reaction and this is why we call it a gut instinct, because it is your body responding to stimuli, to information. And all three are designed to work, all three are designed to work in alignment. So that's our instincts, a function of the physical body. Second, we have intuition. Our intuition is a function of the soul, because our intuition is the emotional read that we get on a person, the emotional read or perception that we get about a person. It could be about a person, ourselves, a situation, but it's the emotional read. And so if we remember that the soul is our mind, our emotions, and our will, when you intuitively know something, you're picking up on the emotions behind what's going on. And so this is why a person can be uh, nice to you on the surface, say all pleasant things on the surface, even be civil and even a little cordial, more than civil. But you will still know that there is something within that dynamic that makes you feel like you can't trust them. And let's say that you don't suffer from paranoia and you know that you cannot trust them. You can't relax around them. You know they don't like you. And then you find out weeks down the road that they were throwing mud on your name, talking about you like you were lower than a roach. How did you know weeks prior to finding out they were spreading rumors about you that they didn't like you? Because you got the emotional read on them, right? That's a function of the soul. 
what we call intuition. So you picked up on where they are emotionally because emotions are thought, energy, emotion. So even though they said all the right things on the surface, you were able to see how they were moving emotionally and it was misaligned. Then our third internal mechanism, which is the highest internal mechanism that we often disregard the most, is our discernment. So when we become believers, we have the gift of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit gives us discernment. Now discernment happens so quickly that it can be easy for us to overlook it. Now remember what we said about frequency. Frequency is the rate at which something vibrates. And what is vibration? Vibration is the movement of particles. So you could think of frequency as the rate that something moves. The higher the frequency, the faster the vibration. So the higher you go in your walk with God and you are growing in the fruit of the spirit, you were growing in godly knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You were growing in the word. You were growing in the application of the word. You are growing in letting the same mind that was in Christ be in you. You're growing in all these different areas, right? So you're operating at a higher frequency spiritually. You're unlocking more and more of the kingdom within. You're tapping into that part of who you are, right? The higher the frequency the faster the vibration. And so when the Holy Spirit gives us discernment, it is quick and powerful. It is a word from God. It's quick, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing the soul and the spirit. It cuts through everything. It cuts through belief system. It cuts through logic. It cuts through everything it needs to cut through so that you can quickly make an assessment. The purpose of discernment is to help us rightly judge good from evil and by judge i'm talking about assess and there are times you have to make a quick assessment so it could be something as simple as somebody is handing out uh candy and you're with your child and you just discern not to take the candy and maybe your child took the candy and they were about to put the candy in their mouth and you slapped it out your child's hand, not to hurt your child, but just to force the candy to go on the floor. And you come to find out that there was some something toxic in the candy. Now you didn't know that. You didn't know that when you did it. You just listen to what the Holy Spirit was telling you. And you may not even have a name for it because a lot of times we don't really know myself included how to articulate everything the holy spirit is, is saying to us because it is quick it is powerful if we think about the analytical mind the analytical mind has to reason the analytical mind goes through a process of critical thinking but when you are in a situation where you have to make a very quick assessment and you don't have the luxury of time on your side and it has to be an immediate decision very done very quickly you're not going to have the time to go through the process of weighing the pros and cons. Should I take the candy from my child or should I let them take one lick and take, you don't have that type of time. And so you will just have an inner knowing that says, no, it's that quick. And you got to act on it immediately. And I'm just giving you that example. And think about other times in your life where the Holy Spirit spoke to you and you listened and the way that it benefited you. And also think about the flip side. When the Holy Spirit warns us about something, but we want what we want. So if we don't listen, we're like, oh, I didn't hear that one. No, I really like him. I really like her. So it works both ways, right? So the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. So the higher the frequency, the faster the vibration. And so when you are really moving forward in the things of God, you are going to get a read on people so quickly, it's going to make your head spin. And when it first starts happening, it'll scare you because you will start seeing things in the spirit. And I'm not talking about seeing things in the spirit like Casper the Friendly Ghost. I'm talking about being able to see beneath the veneer of what a person is showing you. So a person may be saying all the right things, presenting you with a best case scenario. And you're saying, don't sign this business deal. I don't know why I'm not going to sign it. And you're just, you're, you're getting this. You're getting this thought coming to your mind. Don't sign it. You don't sign it and you find out weeks, months down the road that it was a bad deal. 
How did you know? Because the Holy Spirit told you. But because we are so used to uh, having evidence, physical evidence, right? And we are used to being trained that seeing is believing when in actuality discerning is the highest form of believing. So oftentimes we dismiss this little voice. We downplay it like, eh, hey, you know, I'll get back to it. When you might not have the luxury of time. And so what am I getting at? Don't match a person's energy. Discern it and protect yours. So if they're in a state of inner chaos, you don't want to match that. You want to protect your peace from their chaos. If they're in a state of envy towards you, you don't want to match their envy with equal envy. You want to protect your goals, your dreams, the things that you're building from their envy. So you're not going to share that aspect of your life with them. You are going to guard your heart. When you're around somebody envious because you know that where there's envy and self-seeking, there's confusion in every evil work. And you don't want them to bring confusion and evil works into your life. So you're going to be very guarded around them even when they think they know. Even when they speak on what they think they know, you're not going to engage in a conversation and invite them in. That's what I'm getting at. So a person could say, oh, I know you're going to school for so-and-so. Oh, I know you just took the test for so-and-so. I know you just bought a house. But you are not going to sit there and engage them in a conversation about those things because you already have discerned that they are envious. You don't need to be rude. You be very clear without being nasty. So don't match a person's energy. If someone is coming at you, we're one-upping you because they have to be the shiniest object in the room. And you're like, well, if they tell me about their trip to London, I'm going to tell them about my trip to Paris. If they tell me about their trip to the Bahamas, I'm going to tell them about my trip to Barbados. And you're just going back and forth and back and forth. That is a complete waste of time. Why would you match that energy? That is low vibrational conversation. Remember, the higher the frequency, the faster the, vib the vibration. And so if you are on a whole nother frequency, you don't even want to engage that. Because you're too busy focusing your resources of energy. And that includes your thought energy, your emotional energy, and your word energy on things that are going to better your life. On things that are in alignment with your best mental well-being. Things that are in alignment with your goals and dreams. Things are, that are in alignment with God's good plans and purpose for your life. You ain't got time for the foolery. So don't meet and match a negative person's negative energy. Mm -mm. Simply discern it real quick and protect yours. Protect yours. They're coming at you with the energy of envy. You protect your goals and dreams. They're coming at you with the energy of confusion. You protect your clarity and your peace of mind. They're coming at you with the energy of envy, wanting to tear you down. You protect what's most important to your heart. They're coming at you with the energy of gossip. You protect your personal life. By being extremely boundaried with them. They're coming at you with the energy of some sort of ill will. You protect your well-being. Mental, emotional, physical and your safety. Your physical safety. By being heavily boundaried around them. And increasing your, situ your situational awareness whenever you and them are in the same vicinity. If you must be in the same vicinity. right? It could be like a neighbor that... You're in the same building, you might bump into each other in the laundry, in the parking lot. So you increase your situational awareness, right? When you're around them, but don't, don't match their energy, but increase your situational awareness, of course. So when you protect your energy, right? You don't match a wicked person's energy because you ain't wicked. Be aware. Move with caution when need be. Protect what you got to protect in the way that you got to protect it. But stay in the place of God. Because the higher the frequency, the faster the vibration. And so when you keep yourself in the place of God, what's going to happen is it is going to be virtually impossible to game you 
to gaslight you, to run these scams and plays on you, to try to come at you sideways because you will see them before they're even coming because you're already 10 steps ahead of them because the level that you're at spiritually, you will see in the spirit regardless of how they are trying to camouflage their true intentions, regardless of how they're trying to masquerade where they're really coming from, you will see through them. It's what's, what's them glasses <laughs> when you can see movement? What are the glasses called? Somebody put it in the comments. Whatever those glasses are called, are they infrared? One of y'all put it in the comments, the name of them glasses. But it's like you got them glasses on where uh, you have night vision. And just how a lion can see the movement at night, you, you, your eyes are like that in the spirit. Like, okay, you you trying to trick me into thinking you my friend, but I see you, you moving real funny. You, you, you moving, I ain't going to say this to you because why would I tell you what I know? Why would I let the left hand know what the right hand is doing? Nah, I'm smarter than that. I'm wiser than that. I ain't going to let you know nothing, but I'm going to move accordingly. I'm going to move according to what the Holy Spirit is showing me about how you're moving. So when you do that, you will have better well-being long-term. You will have better well-being long-term. So I hope you found this helpful. And I wanted to get this out to you, particularly to my members, because uh, those of you who are members at the second tier or higher, you get a lot of the videos uh, in advance. So you get the videos in advance and you get the commercial free version of the video before it goes to the public with commercials. So I wanted to make sure to get this out to you. And if you're doing the soul fast, uh, which uh, is coming up tomorrow, there's going to be a component where you're doing a relationship audit. Remember, the soul fast is divided into four components, right? Over the course of 40 days, we are focusing on four specific areas of our life. We're focusing on detoxing from toxic mindsets. So that's the mind, toxic mindsets, thoughts, beliefs. That's days one through 10. Days 11 through 20, we're focusing on the heart. And this is where we're fasting and detoxing from intensely negative emotions like resentment, bitterness, envy. Uh, part three, days 21 through 30, we're focusing on our choices. That's the will. And we're assessing whether or not we're choosing life and blessings or death and curses because our will is expressed through our choices. Like I will go to the store. You're choosing to go to the store. And then the last component of the soul fast has to do with what we're talking about today. And that's where we are doing a relationship audit because our relationships affect our mind, our mental, our emotions, and our choices. And so this is where you are really assessing the people who you spend the most time with to see, you know, are we even walking in agreement? Are there some people who I have labeled a friend that I may need to reframe that they're more of an associate? Are there anybody, is there anyone that I may need to totally come out from among them because it is depleting everything inside of me? And so this is where you want to change from that mindset of matching people's energy for those who may be uh, succumb to that mindset and don't match a negative person's energy. Quickly discern it and protect yours. Quickly discern it and protect yours because you got too much to do to be matching a negative person's energy. You got too much to do for your family, yourself, the kingdom. You got too many goals to achieve. You got to enjoy this, this, this life. Right, Christ came so that we could have life abundantly, not so that we could be matching toxic energy. So let's do this. We got this. So if you're doing the soul fast, let me know in the comments section. If you have done the soul fast in the past, let me know how it has benefited you. If this is your second, third, or fourth go around of the soul fast, what are you going to be doing differently this year? Where will your focus be this year? Don't forget to get the soul fast workbook. It is now out of stock at uh, Barnes and Nobles. But it is still available uh, at Amazon. So get the book if you are doing the Soul Fast so that you have the daily worksheets and you have all of the information that you need to successfully do the Soul Fast. For those doing uh, the Cassandra Mac uh, Ministries Soul Fast, you need the workbook to be able to do the Soul Fast successfully. So with that being said, have an amazing day. And if you are not a member of the YouTube channel, for those who are uh, seeing this uh, video after the member see it, I would encourage you to become a member. When you're a member, particularly at the second tier or higher, it is the best investment that you could make. You get access to the Wednesday Wellness Club, which is a therapeutic group that meets twice a month by telephone conference call, focusing on mental fitness, mental resilience, 
emotional mastery, well-being through a biblical lens. And it is so therapeutic. That's the feedback we get from people who uh, come to the wellness club. And you get to connect with like-minded people. You're not just interacting with me. On the conference call, you are hearing the stories, interacting with other like-minded people who are about their positivity. So if you want to be part of a positive community, and we are very stern about that, that it's about positive people coming together, not somebody coming to detract and take away from what we're trying to build. I would encourage you to become a member of the channel at the second tier or higher. If you want access to the Soul Fast check-in videos, that's a feature that comes with being a member at the third tier. There will be Soul Fast check-in videos. But again, you don't necessarily need the check-in uh, videos because the book lays out everything you need. But some people prefer uh, more guidance than what the book offers. But the book gives you everything you need to successfully complete the uh, Soul Fast. So with that being said, have an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Let's be kind to each other. And remember... We're not matching energy. <laughs> We're protecting our energy. We are guarding our heart and we are utilizing our energy because your energy is holy, right? Your energy is holy. It comes from the Holy Spirit as a believer. We are utilizing our energy and pouring our energy into the betterment of our lives, the betterment of the things that God is calling us to do in this season and the next. Amen. All right. Talk to you later. Take care. First Thessalonians 5 verse 5 in the Bible says, For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. In a world filled with darkness, let's choose to be the light. to shine Why don't you celebrate your life Don't let no one kill your vibe You got greatness deep Don't fumble the fight In a world filled with darkness We can be a bright